Welcome to the next video in the Level 3 Electrical Design Cable Selection Series from the Focus Training Group. Today we're going to take a look at how we size our circuit conductor. Before we begin, it is recommended that you review the first four videos leading up to this point if you haven't already done so. So before we look at the procedure for selecting our conductor size, let's have a brief recap on what we've covered so far. First of all, we looked at how we calculate IB, our design current, which is the amount of current or amps that our circuit or equipment will draw under normal circumstances. We then looked at selecting a protective device rating, IN, using the information from BS7671 Chapter 41, making sure that we chose a protective device rating that was either equal to or just above our design current, therefore not operating when our circuit is performing its normal duties. We also looked at identifying the rating factors that are applicable to our calculation. We took into consideration things like ambient temperature, grouping, cables buried in the ground, and cables run through thermal insulation. We consulted Appendix 4 of BS7671 to identify the appropriate factors to use in our calculations. We then looked at the two values IZ and IT and the difference between them. IZ being the in-service current carrying capacity, IT being the tabulated current carrying capacity from BS7671 Appendix 4. We discovered that the IT values, or the tabulated values, already take into account cable type, reference method, and a designated ambient temperature. If we then applied the specific rating factors for our given situation, we could calculate IZ. If you haven't already done so, it would be worth reviewing that video, as we discovered that the method we're going to use today to select our circuit conductor size does not actually need us to know the value of IZ. So from what we've learned so far, we have these two formulas over on the right hand side of the page. The top one tells us that our design current should be less than or equal to our protective device rating. Therefore, our protective device will not operate when our load is carrying out its normal duties. And our IN should be less than or equal to the IT, the value of our tabulated current carrying capacity of our selected cable. Therefore, our circuit conductor will not rise to a dangerous temperature before the protective device operates. One of the key skills of carrying out conductor sizing formulas, otherwise known as cable calculations, is to be able to recognise relevant information, either in practical circumstances, out in real world scenarios, or in simulated scenarios of exam questions. The example we have here is 8 times 230 volt 500 watt floodlights are going to be installed at high level in a boiler house. The circuit is to be wired in BS6724 70 degree SWA, fixed to concrete walls with cleats. The existing consumer unit has spare ways that will accept circuit breakers to be SEN 60898. The ambient temperatures are 30 degrees at ground level and 40 degrees at high level. The new circuit will be grouped with one other in a single layer for the majority of its run. So what key information can we pick out from this scenario? First of all we have our supply voltage which is 230 volts, single phase. Our load will be 8 times 500 watt floodlights. So that will give us 4,000 watts or 4 kilowatts for our load. The supply voltage and the power rating will be key to working out an accurate design current. Then we have the equipment, which is going to be commercial lighting. This will be key in determining what type of protective device to use. We are then given the standard in this scenario, so we know we should be selecting a BSEN 60898, which hopefully we will recognize is a circuit breaker. We can also see in our scenario we have our cable type, BS6724, SWA 70 degree thermoplastic. Knowing the operating temperature of this cable type will help us choose the correct tables when we come to look in Appendix 4 of BS7671. It tells us that our cable will be fixed to concrete walls with cleats, so we need to recognise that this is going to be clip direct or reference method C, again key to using the correct sections of the tables in Appendix 4. The rating factors given are for ambient temperature and for grouping. So first step is to identify the design current. We know from our scenario our supply voltage is 230 volts and our load is 4 kilowatts, 4000 watts. Our design current formula is going to be IB, design current, equal to power, divided by nominal voltage. So we put in our figures. Remember we have to use the base value, 4000 watts, divided by 230 volts give us a design current of 17.39 amps. Next, we have to select an appropriate protective device type and rating. 
remembering that the equipment is commercial lighting, the standard is BSCN 60898 and our design current is 17.39 amps. If we look at table 7.2.7 .7, taken from the IET on-site guide, we can see the most appropriate circuit breaker type would be a type C. If we then look at a section from chapter 41 of BS 7671, which gives us the common type of circuit breakers and their ratings, we can see we have the common ratings for type C circuit breakers to BS 60898. Remembering that we need to choose a protective device rating that is either equal to or greater than our design current, we would choose a 20 amp. Therefore, a protected device would be a BSEN 60898C20. Next, we have to identify the applicable rating factors. First of all, for ambient temperature, in our scenario, we were given two ambient temperatures, one of 30 degrees at ground level and one of 40 degrees at high level. With ambient temperatures, we have to choose a temperature which would have the most extreme effect on our installation. In this case, it would be the higher, which is 40 degrees. To use table 4B1 of BS7671, shown bottom left, we will have to bear in mind our cable type. We can see from our scenario that it was BS6724SWA, which was 70 degree thermoplastic. This will help us choose the correct column in table 4B1. So if we look along the top row, we can see we have a column for 70 degree thermoplastic. If we look down to the corresponding row for 40 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, we can see our rating factor to use is 0.87. We were also given grouping in our scenario, where we had two circuits in a single layer. If we look at table 4C1 of BS7671, shown on the bottom right, we have the column for the arrangement, so cables touching, and if we go down to the bottom, it says single layer on a wall or floor. So this is the row we're going to use. If we then go along to the column, it's got number two at the top, because we have two circuits, we can see our rating factor to use is 0.85. Now we have all the information required, we can use the formula that will help us choose our circuit conductor size. We have our protective device rating, IN, of 20. We have our CA rating factor of 0.87 and our CG grouping factor of 0.85. If we remember top right, we have our two formulas we need to bear in mind. So our IB is less than or equal to IN, which is less than or equal to IT. So to choose a value for IT, that needs to be greater than or equal to IN divided by our applicable rating factors. In this scenario, we only have two rating factors to apply, so we put all the figures into the formula, and it gives us IT should be greater than or equal to 20 divided by 0.87 times 0.85. We've then redrawn that formula at the bottom, and we can see we have 20 divided by 0.7395. These are our rating factors times together. Therefore, our IT, our tabulated current carrying capacity of our cable, needs to be greater than or equal to 27.05 amps. We can now use that value to choose the adequately sized conductor from the relevant table in BS7671 Appendix 4. Remembering our cable type, which was BS6724SWA, 70 degree thermoplastic. We need to look for the corresponding table in Appendix 4. And in this scenario, it would be table 4D4A, which is for multi-core armoured, 70 degree thermoplastic insulated cables. Another key bit of information we need here is recognising our reference method, which, if we remember from our scenario, was cleats on a concrete wall, and we recognise that was clip direct reference method C. So if we look in table 4D4A, we can see we have a group of two columns underneath reference method C. The other thing we need to recognise here is whether it's a single phase or three phase circuit. Again, remember back to the scenario, it was 230 volts single phase. So under reference method C, we should be looking at the table on the left. One, two core cable, single phase AC or DC. It's worth noting that sometimes people get confused with these columns. It should be noted that where it states one, two core cable, this is relating to the current carrying cores. So even if we're using a three core SWA, one of those cores would be used as our CPC. Therefore, it's only the two cores that we'd be using for our line and neutral. So just because we have three cores in a multi-core cable does not mean we use the column on the right for three or four core cables, because as we can see, this is for three-phase AC. 
So if we take into account, we need to select a value of IT, which is greater than or equal to 27.05 amps. And using the correct column under reference method C, one two core cable, we need to select a conductor size that can quite happily take 27.05 amps. We can see from this scenario that a 2.5mm conductor could happily take 28 amps. Therefore, our circuit conductor selected will be, for now, 2.5mm. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Next time, we're going to be looking at how we calculate voltage drop and whether the size of our circuit conductor is selected, coupled with the design current and the length, will be within the permitted voltage drop limits. Please subscribe to our channel to keep up with all the latest updates to this design series and other relevant content. See you soon.